We've all heard of and maybe even played games like Limbo, Braid, Super Meat Boy or that Minecraft game made by this guy. Judging by the success of these titles, there can be little doubt that indie games have hit the big time. But is there more to it than that? Is being indie all it's cracked up to be? Ask today's young whippersnappers and you'll find a large portion of up-and-coming developers have got that indie gleam in their eye, lured by the promise of making games on their own terms. But while the romantic image of indie game developers is that they get to sleep in, eat in front of the TV and work without pants, the reality is a little more sobering. Until now, very little was known about the day-to-day -day realities of independent game development, save of course for the whole pants thing. But now, an award-winning Sundance documentary is showing the world just what it takes to be an indie game developer. Indie Game the Movie is a documentary by Canadian filmmakers Lisanne Peugeot and James Swersky, who spent one year tracking the lives and game-making processes of Braid creator Jonathan Blow, Super Meat Boy developers Team Meat, and Fez co-creator Phil Fish. What they discovered had very little resemblance to this. It's an inspirational tale, but it's also a cautionary tale. Like, it depends how you're looking at it completely. Because these guys, they do amazing things, but they go through a lot of shit to do it. Like, it's, and it's really, really hard. Like, it, it, any game that's made is a miracle. Like, the fact that any games actually ship. And work. Yeah, it, and yeah, it's just like this little miracle, because I'm sure you could go through Team Meat and uh, Super Meat Boy, Braid, Fez, and just look at all these little points where if it went the other way, it wouldn't exist and everything would have fell to crap. Of course, talk to any indie developer and they're not likely to start tearing their hair out and pleading Activision or EA for a job. As much as making indie games is a tough slog, there's no denying that indie developers have the freedom to experiment with any idea they want and have as much time as they want to do it in. I mean, who else is going to make a retro platformer about a cube of meat tasked with rescuing his girlfriend from a doctor who is actually a fetus in a jar? Seriously, who? It's like a giant company can't take any sort of risk because when you have 50 employees and you have to make sure you make payroll, the last thing your investors want you to do is go like, hey, we have this idea for this weird experimental game. And they'll go, why aren't you making Call of Duty 4? You, you go indie to do what you want to do and have the freedom to do what you want to do and not have to answer to somebody, not have to wake up and, you know, yeah, it's, have to work. It's People probably won't like it being said like this, but it's the difference in changing what you do from a hobby to a job. And what we do, even though we've made money and stuff, we still enjoy doing it. So in a way, it's still like a hobby, and it's something we take very, very seriously. But we don't take it serious to the point of where it's actually like a job, you know, where we have to have set schedules and set milestones and stuff. Where it's it's still it's still fun for us. Okay, so let's stop there for a second and analyze. Being indie pros. Good working hours, ability to take risks, doing what you want, no pants. Being indie cons, no food, no money, no sleep, no job security. Oh, and this little problem. Braid is an art house masterpiece, nothing like your mainstream kitty games. Well, you rescue a princess from a castle. It's subversive, you wouldn't understand. But you had jump on the Goombas. Does this look like a Goomba to you? Yes! Okay. Ultimately, okay. what it boils down to is personality. For some developers, being indie is not a choice, it's a way of life. And no amount of coercing will ever, ever entice them to don a suit and work 9 to 5 for a AAA publisher. We look at going and working for a company as a failure. Yeah, like, like, like we couldn't if, do it. If we, if we couldn't, if, if, well, because even you said this, Tommy, if Super Meat Boy bombed, you probably just go work at Epic or something. Yeah, and that would be hell, and I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, it's not. It's. I don't think any indie, indie developer. I don't. I don't know any indie developer who's making indie games to catch the eye of a bigger publisher so they could work for them. Here's the thing. I don't know any good indie developer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't think it's a choice for them. Like, it, it's not like a pragmatic business decision in any way. Like, I think it's just something that they need to do. Like, they they feel compelled to make these games and make them this way, and they have to make them this way because no one else is going to make this game. And, and that's the, you know, the advantage. You get to be your own boss and do your own thing, but there's just so much risk, right? You spend two years working on something and you don't know whether it's going to pay off or not. Like, you don't. So really, being indie is not that much different to working in the AAA environment. While very different in nature, each offers its own advantages and disadvantages. It just depends on what suits the individual. 
and with more and more indie games garnering both critical and commercial success, what it really comes down to is simply whether you like wearing pants or not.